As you read my letter last week on Tuesday, I did not indicate why I am apologizing, but I'm here to indicate that or to say this. I was in church and I, uh, I make a mistake by saying that the members of parliament that voted yes, they were bribed with the two million. Honorable Speaker, I'm here to say sorry to the members because I don't have any evidence that they receive money. Uh, Honorable Speaker, those was just a hearsay that I, I had when we was, uh, we was voting during the second reading of finance bill. I urge the members to forgive me and then we move forward for the betterment of this country. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Koemburi. David Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I just wanted to help uh, Honorable Koemburi to learn how to seek forgiveness. Before you seek forgiveness, you must confess the lie first. So you must confirm first that you lied, that you are dishonest, you lied in church, you lied to the people of Kenya, and put us to great shame. Then after that, after you have confessed, then you can ask for forgiveness. But before that, you cannot just ask for forgiveness. Yes, uh, order. Honorable Wamumbi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Order, Rosa. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, some of us lost properties because Honorable Koyiburi lied that we received two million so that we could vote for the finance bill. Mr. Speaker, I'm asking one question. Is Honorable Koyiburi ready to go back to the same church and apologize from the same church that he lied? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we must, we must speak the truth and tell each other the truth. Is Honorable Koibori ready to go to the same church and admit on the same pulpit that he's, he lied and he incriminated these members of parliament, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. Honorable Ruku. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, Honorable Koimbori is insincere, even with his apology, is insincere. Even the way, even the way the letter is uh, wanted, Mr. Speaker, um, we have we have lost faith with people of the Republic of Kenya because of the lie of Honorable Koimbori, and I think we should not even call him honourable because he has proved he is not honorable. If he can be able to lie in front of the church that members who voted yes received two million on his feet in front of clergy, then I think, Honorable Speaker, we need to prescribe a very harsh punishment of Honorable Koimbori. And before we do that, we need to do exactly what Honorable um, Deputy Speaker, I say it to prescribe his apology in clear terms so that we can decide whether we are going to forgive him or not. Mr. Speaker, otherwise, as a member who voted yes, I am not ready to forgive Honorable Koimbori for I. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Wangare. Thank you. Order. Thank you. Order, Honorable Members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, the apology is tender to the people who voted yes in this yes. house. Yes. And what we have suffered, Mr. Speaker, cannot be even be quantified in a single letter, Mr. Speaker. Many members have been harassed for no reason. And Mr. Speaker, one thing that Honorable Koimbori, and I'm very sad because I knew the father. 
the father is from my constituency. He was a very honest man. I don't know who became of this Honorable Koimburi, Mr. Speaker, because he lied through the teeth in the pulpit, in the pulpit, and with no shame. Mr. Speaker, what we need, even as we go to forgive Honorable Koimburi, we must set a precedent in this house, Mr. Speaker, that you cannot just say things outside there, incriminating members of parliament, incriminating the whole house, Mr. Speaker, and go, get away with it, Mr. Speaker. We must have him pay damages, but more importantly, we must have him taken action against by the Speaker, Powers and Privileges Committee, Mr. Speaker. There must be clear so that next time any member who would like to drag the names of members under the bus to look good, Mr. Speaker, then they will think twice. And Mr. Speaker, one thing Honorable Koimbori must realize, he may have been doing this to look good. By the way, the whole house, one is rotten, all of us will be rotten, including him, Mr. Speaker. So I hope that this will be a lesson, and the precedent that will be set from your desk, Mr. Speaker, will discourage others from going the route that Honorable Koimbori has gone. It is a shame, and he should be ashamed of himself. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Owen Bayer. Honorable Speaker, you know, Honorable Speaker, I come from a priestly lineage. And uh, the Bible is very clear that forgiveness is divine. Now, if the forgiveness is divine, upon uh, seeking for it, we are obliged that we forgive. And uh, Honorable Speaker, in Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, he says that sometimes punishment may not be the execution of the crime. But more importantly, it is that the person, I'm sure, Orbo Kiyomburi, within the time that he has lived with his guilty, he has atoned his sins. And because he has atoned his sin, and that forgiveness is divine, I personally forgive him and request this house to forgive him. I thank you, Orbo Speak. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Indeed, it is regrettable uh, what has been going around, but I also want to congratulate the Honorable Member for being a gentleman and apologizing. We have more important business to work on, and uh, just to my brother, like Ruku, there are more atrocities that have been committed in this house, including taking people's signatures and we don't know where you took them. That was more serious. So, Honorable Speaker, yes, the Honorable Member made a mistake. He to has owned up the mistake Boka, and apologized. Boka, Thank you, Honorable Member. Two wrongs don't make a right. Forgive him and proceed, Honorable Speaker. We have more important business for this house. Kenyans are watching at us. Mr. Speaker, let's rest this matter. Asante sana, Mr. Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, the standing orders of this house does not describe what an apology should look like in this house. The Honorable Member has actually apologized. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter if he got the figures wrong or if he got the facts wrong, but he's apologized. And on that note, Mr. Speaker, I think the onus is on us to forgive him as a house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me begin first by appreciating uh, what has been said by other members about forgiveness and uh, commend the Honorable Koimburi. Because we are all men and women. And I say men in the parlance of the Bible. Men and women. And we are honorable men and women. And we ought to carry... Honorable Speaker, I beg you protect me from the Honorable Betty. I say, Honorable Speaker, that we are seen and viewed to be honorable men and women. And it is perceived, or it should be, that we are among the very best 
in our society because our people elected us as among the best of the people in their constituencies. And I'm sure even the people of Juja elected the Honorable Koimburi, believing he was one of the best among us, the people of Juja. And therefore, he has been very magnanimous to apologize. And the book of 1 John 1, 9, The, books, the good book tells us that if we confess our sins, he, meaning God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I think, Honorable Order. Speaker, I have listened to what uh, members across the aisle have said that if you seek forgiveness, you shall be forgiven. And I must commend the Honorable Koimbori for seeking forgiveness for his unrighteous ways of things he said about members that were not there. But the book also tells us if you confess. And I, when I listened to the Honorable Koimbori, I heard him say that he said things that he now knows are untrue, and he knew they were untrue even at the time he said. Therefore, honorable speaker, the fact that the Bible tells us if we confess, we shall be forgiven by the Almighty God, and we are all followers of Christ and followers of the Almighty God, Allah, even for those of us who are from the Muslim Islamic faith. Honorable Speaker, if you can forgive me from these ones who are saying we are not God. Of course, I know we are not God. But we all believe in God. And I want to believe in this house, Honorable Speaker, we are men and women of great faith. Men and women who are Christians and others who are very good Muslims, who believe in the Almighty God. And therefore, being followers of Christ like myself, I have absolutely no problem as a person in forgiving the Honorable Koimbori for his inequities. <laughs> However, to protect the institution of Parliament, Honorable Speaker, to protect the dignity of this House, to protect the dignity of innocent members of Parliament who are seen as sellouts for either 2 million shillings or 2,000 shillings or whatever the amount was, Honorable Speaker, then I would beg that we handle this matter with a little bit more care so that tomorrow I do not stand up and accuse a member of parliament who votes this way or the other of having received bribes, knowing what I am saying is untrue. More worrying, Honorable Speaker, and I would urge you, Honorable Speaker, to ask the Honorable Koimbori to stand in his place. Because if you seek forgiveness, please do so with clean hands. When the Honorable Koimbori wrote that letter last week, Honorable Speaker, that letter was delivered to your office in the evening, a copy was delivered to my office, and a copy, I think, to the leader of minority, because they were copied. And I would have wanted to hear the Honorable Koimbori confirm if indeed what he says, he was the author of this letter. This letter was delivered by a staff member in his office, whom he knows, and I don't want to name him because he's not here, but the Honorable Koimbori knows his staff member who delivered that letter. The letter was stamped in my office. Unfortunately, the person who stamped it received, put one stamp upside down on the copy that he came with, that he was to return with. And he asked that it be stamped properly, facing up, and it was stamped. That is the letter that circulated on social media last week. The Honorable George Koimbori, on his social media platform, specifically on his Facebook page, stamped the same letter fake and said it is fake news. I therefore have been more convinced 
to believe in the seeking of forgiveness by Honorable Koimbori if he also came out clearly to tell the people of Kenya whether the dishonesty exhibited in, on his Facebook page is not the same dishonesty he now seeks to exhibit on the floor of this house pretending to seek forgiveness that he does not mean. But if the Honorable Koimbori can confirm to me and to this house that even his actions on Facebook page that day were informed by other factors other than the truth, Honorable Speaker, and confirm he was the author of this letter, then I am more than willing myself to forgive the Honorable Koimbori. Failure to do that, Honorable Speaker, and that's why I say there must be a balance between our faith and the dignity and honor and respect of this house, Honorable Speaker. Failure to do that, then I would strongly recommend because Honorable Koimbori cannot be in a church and allege one thing. Come and draft a letter seeking forgiveness. Then the same evening, post on social media that the letter is fake. A week after, appear on the floor of this house, now saying a different thing. Which George Koimbori do we believe? Which George Koimbori are we seen here? Which Koimbori, George Koimbori is here? Is it the George Koimbori who lies in church? Is it the George Koimbori who stamps letters fake on social media? Or is it the meek-looking George Koimbori who is seated here now seeking forgiveness? If this George Koimbori is seated here seeking forgiveness, Honorable Speaker, is the same Koimbori, I forgive him. If the George Koimbori of lying in church and later denying and reasserting the lie, then I will not forgive that George Koimbori. But the George Koimbori who is here, if he wants to be honorable, if he wants to dignify this house, he must come out clean, confess one to the lie he said in church, confess to the lie he sold on social media. If he comes out clean, I am more than willing to forgive the Honorable George Koimbori and ask the Almighty God to also forgive him for having lied in church. And uh, the Honorable George Koimbori is my very good friend, Honorable Speaker. In fact, the Honorable George Koimbori, in his first election as a member of parliament, he will tell you he had serious problems when he was seeking election first as a member of parliament. The Honorable George Koimbori was elected never having set foot in a single political rally in Juja constituency. He campaigned when he was uh, hiding, in hiding. And he knows the only place he could come to when he was in hiding was to my house for me to facilitate him, to be able to facilitate his campaign. And these are facts of life, Honorable Speaker. And the Honorable Koimbori knows. I have invited him to my house, facilitated his campaign. And that is why, as a friend, I, I choose to forgive him if he confesses the dishonesty. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, I will ask, Thank you. before you conclude, the Honorable George Koimbori to rise in his place and clarify the matter of the letters, because that is pertinent for me and for many members to know whether indeed is genuine in the seeking of forgiveness. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Order, Rosa Buyu. Order, Rosa Buyu. Order, Rosa Buyu. You are being disorderly. Then go out without causing disorder. Wamrata. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand, <laughs> I stand to address this issue of Koimbori. Uh, having come from the same county with him and being his mama county, I, number one, was very embarrassed at the situation that Koimbori put us in. And I see us members continuing shouting at one another at this point. I'm trying to ask myself whether all of us got to know the magnitude of destruction that statement made to this country. Uh, and it is about all of us. Yes, and somebody is calling me Bibia Bishop, and you knowing that I'm a wife of a clergy, and having sat here to take two million shillings to go and sell my county, that to me meant that I am not only a rogue, 
but I am also not respecting my Christian faith. But all said and done, Mr. Speaker, I would want to say this. It is very hard for a Kikuyu man to say sorry. It never comes out easily from a Kikuyu man. I may not know about other communities, but I can confess that for a Kikuyu man, it is never easy to say sorry. So I'm imagining Koimbori must have tried to work out to come and say sorry. But again, he is playing us a game. Because Koimbori has apologized and apologized very clearly and we feel good. But the same Koimbori has put the same letter in his social media and said it is a fake letter. So again, he puts us in another mess because we will appear like we forced him to come and say it was a lie. So maybe, Mr. Speaker, you would give us a direction on what this means to us because I think part of what fueled what happened here on the 25th was that statement. We are trying to downplay the statement, but that would have meant the end of all of us, including our children. And as I am seeing some people there shouting, they need to understand the magnitude and the weight of that statement and what it meant to this country and where it had, would have taken us. So, Mr. Speaker, I only want to make one request that maybe Koimbori, people may not buy our story because they already believe we are, we are given the two million. But then he needs to put a proper, a proper apology to the people of Kenya. They may not buy the story, but at least you would have spoken about it. But for me, as his mama county, I had said I will never forgive him in heaven and on earth. But today on this floor of the house, I am choosing to forgive him, but on condition that he again puts again on his social media that whatever he said was a lie. And yes, and go to the same church which is also in Kiambu County where I represent and stand there na any member of your church and be prayed for. Na hiyo kanisa yao believes in mafuta and ya mwagiriwa paka mafuta ya confession so that we forgive him. Yes, Osoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, immediately we had an issue here in, uh, on 25th. That Sunday, Honorable Speaker, I tried to attend some church, a men's conference in Ruiru constituency, Honorable Speaker. And immediately I entered that church that I do not worship in. People started singing as I walked, you know, towards uh, my sitting position, two million, two million, two million. I am not an MP elected to represent the people of Ruiru constituency. And I was left wondering, Honorable Speaker, if this is what I am facing, a person elected in, you know, a constituency that is about 500 kilometers from the place I attended church, Honorable Speaker, I couldn't help but sympathize with the situation of, of uh, the member of, of parliament for Ruiru, Honorable Speaker. This is the, what these members are talking about. The members seated on the opposite side of uh, this House, Honorable Speaker, may not be aware of what these members seated this side went through, Honorable Speaker. It is extremely difficult to simply just say, by a mere expression or attendance of this Honorable Member in the floor of the House, and just say, please forgive me. It, it, to them, it sounds so easy that just forgive. But what, Honorable Speaker, we are asking is that the Member of Parliament goes an extra mile. And to some of us, Honorable Speaker, that really campaigned for him, there's some of us who went out there when he went there, to, to, when he was vying in the first term, and when he did not even know us by name, Honorable Speaker, during the by-elections, and people contributed. Then even after that, Honorable Speaker, after he won in his uh, second term, he came to my office when he had a petition. And we actually won in his petition. He was awarded uh, uh, the costs. He did not even forgive the, the, other, the petitioner that was uh, running against him. He's actually telling me that you must attach his property. He's here telling us that we forgive him when we've lost a million property, Honorable Speaker, across the country. The Honorable Member, for, uh, the Honorable Member from Nyeri, for the Honorable from one of the... Kieni, the Honorable Chieni, Honorable Speaker, lost... Three supermarkets, three supermarkets. I mean, five worth five billion shillings, Honorable Speaker. And any time he was actually walking around, five million, I'm sorry, 500 million. Five million plus the house, Honorable Speaker. 
and people were singing to his house saying, you have two million. In the minds of the people in the village, the speaker, they think two million is a huge amount that can be used in supermarkets, that can stock the entire supermarket. And Honorable Koimbori did not even stop at that, Honorable Speaker. He went ahead in another function in the company of another top government official of this country and repeated the same words, Honorable Speaker, in another function, Honorable Speaker. So we do not know what apology was he seeking for. In the, was it for the first mistake of saying a lie or the second mistake of repeating the lie and the third mistake of writing on social media and in his own letter that he served in, in your office and uh, the majority leader and still po posted on social media and said fake. So which apology should we take? Is it the first, second, or third apology, Honorable Speaker? And as I, fin as I conclude, Honorable Speaker, I believe this House has got rules and regulations and the procedures to follow. My opinion, Honorable Speaker, could be that the Honorable Koimbori be subjected to the Powers and Privileges Committee so that he can explain his, uh, himself if he can't do it in the entire floor of the House. And, and he can have, uh, you know, his, uh, his, 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 uh, his issues hard, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Honorable members, I want to bring this to an end. Honorable Kuimbori, did you um, label the letter that you sent to my office and I read to this house as fake? Before I give direction. Order. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The letter that uh, uh, Majority leader, leader is talking about the account that was posted that letter it's not my account that was a fake account in my facebook you can check there is two accounts honorable george koimbori account and honorable uh, george koimbori juja one the juja one is a fake account my account is george koimbori you can check even in your phone you can open it. The letter was posted in a fake account. I stand to say, I, 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 I stand, Honorable Speaker, I stand to ask the, my Honorable Members of this House to forgive me. Forgive me. I will never, I will never repeat it again, Honorable Members. Just forgive me, because I had hears it. Prevent me, Honorable All Speaker, down please. Honorable Members. Order. Thank you, Kaimbori. Thank you, Asit. Order. Order. Honorable Kaimbori, finish. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. As I said before, Honorable Speaker, there was a hearsay that uh, Honorable Members uh, who voted yes in a second reading were bribed with the two million. Honorable Speaker, I'm here to apologize to our Honorable Members. Thank you. Order, honorable members. Uh, order. Wamaoa. Thank you, Akul.